thanks everybody for joining us today. My name is Jamie Schwaba, and um, I am the managing director at the Minnesota Conservatory for the Arts um, here in Winona. I know though we have some folks that are joining us from a little bit further away as well. So welcome to people near and far. Um, Hopefully, if you live in Winona, you had a chance to run by the History Center and grab um, a free art kit. Um, I see some bags right by you, so that's exciting. If you didn't, that is okay. Um, you can um, join us with the materials that you have um, that you have on hand, even if you just have some computer paper and. Um, um, and some pens, you can join us and do something. So um, Lisa will give some alternative suggestions on things to do. So just a couple housekeeping rules before I hand it over to um, Lisa Douglas. Um, so, um, so if you wanna take a second um, to um, just familiarize yourself with um, the bottom of your screen, most likely, unless um, some devices are different, um, but um, we will ask, why don't we go ahead, we'll go ahead and ask everybody to mute themselves right now. Um, and we, what we will do is we will go ahead and since we have kind of a large group today and because we are gonna record it for anybody that wants to review it later um, or for anybody that is going to um, get their kit later and um, join us um, virtually later that way, um, we are going to record this. Um, so what I'm going to ask is that if you have any questions um, while um, Lisa is um, doing all the art today, if you want to um, put a message in the chat, um, you can do that. And, um, and then I can interrupt and or let um, Lisa know, ask her questions, ask her to slow down, things like that. And then at the end, we'll stop recording and we'll have a little sharing because we want to see if you're willing to share with us what you created. Um, so um, without further ado, we'll get started. If you can take a second um, to look at, there is a little speech bubble at the bottom um, that you can, um, go ahead and write a message in the chat. I'm also going to post a couple of links um, that later at the end I can show tell you how you can save those links. Um, if you didn't know already, um, if you saw in my email that we sent out today, there was a link to a folder, a Google Drive folder that will allow you to look at, um, that will allow you to look at um, a template and things like that, that, um, that Lisa is going to share today. And if you wanted more templates, you can print those up as well, even if you got a kit. All right, Lisa, did I cover everything? I think so. Um, if not, I guess we'll figure it out as we go. <laughs> oh, speaker view. Um, it, for anybody who's not familiar with Zoom as much, if you go up to your, usually your upper right hand corner, there's something that says view. And if you pick speaker view, you will always see my screen. This is my, my actual desktop here. You'll see that as large as possible in your computer or your device screen. And sometimes that just helps, makes it easier to see what I'm doing. And um, we will make sure that that's large for the recording as well. So if you have any questions, just go ahead and write it in the chat. Okay, so I'm gonna do some things uh, using the basically the same thing that the kit that you got from the History Center. If you didn't get the History Center, I will help kind of explain where we found some things and how I did what I did uh, with little things. Pretty much everything that we put in that kit you can get at a local dollar store or a department store like Walmart or Target or something like that. Um, so nothing is hard to find. And this the template that you'll find if you didn't get the kit the templates that are in there are some things like some drawings like this that I got from a, a stencil and uh, so there's also a, a a full page that has some photos of some antique uh, valentines that are actually in the history center and they've been kind enough to share those with us so 
first off with the uh, templates, and I, mine is kind of all caught up, but I had a couple pages like this. So it's kind of what it looks like and all kinds of things on there. So there's a bunch of different ways you can use your templates. You could color them right on this computer paper or the printout and cut them out and glue them onto something. Or you could use them as an idea to do your own design, add to some things. So uh, feel free to make, uh, like Jamie said, make more copies of that if you need it. And um, you can reuse them that way if you wanna cut them out. So on my desk, I have a few uh, Valentines that I've already done. And when I was a kid, we used to enjoy making our own Valentines. And obviously the bigger, the better. So um, these are on eight and a half by 11, kind of a heavy paper, kind of like a cardstock. And I've done them on some different backgrounds with some different orientations with all of the same basic materials. So you can see. Uh, so basic white paper, the red paper hearts and the white paper hearts are usually available at any dollar store, especially this time of year. And I did some cutouts out of some just red computer paper, white computer paper. And then there's also these cute little Neko. They look like uh, candy, the, the, the iconic Valentine candy. So that's a little foam sticker that went in the middle. Okay, so this one, I layered a bunch of stuff and I did it all pretty symmetrical, one on top of the other. Um, and kind of a straight up and down orientation. The second one I did, this is actually on a really pale pink background. So I wanted to use a lot of pinks in it. So in this one, I cut out the banner that said Valentine on it. And if you can see in the, I think you can see in the screen that I colored it in with a metallic gel pen in the pinks. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool because it reflects, um, it's even better in real life. I did the same on this white piece down here. Some of it's a metallic gel pen and some of it's colored with just a flat, uh, the purplish gel pen, which I think there's a couple of gel pens in your kits too. I also used a silver metallic gel pen to color in some little, uh, I don't know, raindrop shapes around the outside of the red paper heart. And then I added a few other embellishments. There's some uh, self inking stamps that we had and uh, they're easy to find also. Then the, this one I did, this is actually on construction paper. So it's a, it's a little bit larger. It's a nine by 12, I believe. And I thought it'd be fun to do some writing on a darker piece of paper. And if you have a metallic pen, gel pen or something, or even the darker pens, it kind of, it just gives a little bit different look on a dark paper than it does on a white paper. And I used the same banner up here, just colored a little bit different colors and I glued it to a different color background. But on this one, I got a little crazy with my hearts and they don't all line up perfectly one on top of each other. They kind of, I don't know, spill all over, I guess. So, um, so I started with all the same basic supplies, I guess, and I ended up with what I thought was three somewhat different um, designs there. So I just thought I'd show that to you and you can always look back at this video if you wanna see anything specific that I did on one of those. So uh, one of the first things I like to do when I'm drawn, designing a new one is gather all my supplies. So even though you can't see it all on my desk, I do have a pile of paper and I have, I think I'm gonna go with all red and white on this one. So I have some red paper, I have some white computer paper because sometimes it's nice to be able to do, to try some things. Like if you're gonna do some drawing, draw them on there first. I also have the red paper heart and the white paper heart. I have a red cutout. I think this is actually, I cut out the large heart on the template and then traced, used that as like a stencil to trace onto the red paper because that's basically the same size as the solid heart in the middle of the red or of the white paper. Um, oh, one other thing I was going to mention is on the purple on 
on this, this large heart is actually one of the red paper hearts and I turned it upside down because the back is kind of pink looking. So um, the white obviously is going to be same color on both sides, but if you wanted a slightly different, more subtle than the, the red heart, that was kind of fun too. So, all right, I think I'm going to go like super traditional red and white today. And so I'll probably have like a red gel pen and maybe a silver gel pen. Probably stick with those two. I also have my self sink self stamping, self inking stamps. My goodness, that's a hard one to say. Um, I have a glue stick and I recommend a glue stick rather than liquid glue. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. I also have uh, just a drawing pencil and eraser in case I want to make any marks where I want to line things up. And um, my scissors, obviously I have my scissors. Look, it's even red. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is start with the biggest things I have and kind of just do some arranging and start. I, don't, I like to do most of my assembly at the end. So I like to play with it. And I'm thinking I had straight up and down, I had sideways, I had all displaced different hearts. Uh, so I'm gonna have to work really hard to see if I can find something else that's a little bit different. Um, I could have them all on top of each other, but slightly twisted. Um, we'll have to see about that. Okay, so I'm kind of liking I don't know, maybe I'm feeling in a little bit symmetrical mood today. Um, I'm kind of liking them all lined up. Maybe I'll do change the angle a little bit or something like that. So we'll play with that. And I'm going to set that aside. Then this is another little thing you can do with the templates. You can cut out a template, then glue it to another piece of paper and cut that out a little bit larger. So I think I'm going to do that same idea with this kind of heart in the bottom that says love. And um, the other thing I was going to mention is keep your work surface clean. This is just a child's um, placemat, really easy to clean off. When you start using the glue stick, especially if you're using it on the, that lace paper, it just makes a mess. So that will go underneath everything for now. And if anybody's ever done any scrapbooking, this is kind of what I call a scrapbooking technique. I'm gonna cut out, it's kind of hard to use it with that whole piece of paper. So I'm gonna cut it out of the large piece of paper first. And I'm gonna cut leaving a little bit of a border around everything around my heart. I, you, could, you could actually cut the outline into a heart shape as well. Or it could just go a little wider. I like this idea a little bit better than trying to cut extremely close to the edge just because it's easier. Um, see, we'll make it a little heart shaped, see what that looks like. It's kind of a lopsided heart, but that's okay. So my idea with this one is I want a red background on it, kind of like I did with this Valentine banner. So what I'm going to do with my glue stick, see if I can get the cover off the glue stick, uh, roll up a little bit. And when I'm using the glue, I with this stick, I like to start in the middle and just kind of pull towards the edge. And that allows things to lay flat without wrinkling on you and getting stuck to everything. So just a nice coating of glue on the back. And then I'm gonna lay it on my red paper. Look at how that pops when you get that red border around it. Really nice. Okay, so I think I'm gonna just do kind of a narrow border of red. So I'm gonna basically follow my white shape here. And I'm gonna cut it out again, but cut it out in red. So you could look at all the things you have on hand. You could draw some new things, new, new ideas on white paper. 
and then cut them out in your own shapes. Decorate it a little bit. One of the things we found out when we were doing this a similar class last week was if you have scrapbooking scissors that have the funny decorative edges on them, oh, that makes a really fun thing to add to some of these supplies. So if I don't forget to put the cover on your glue stick when you're not using it because it, it does get kind of dry pretty quickly. All right, so I have a few extra things here. Let's see, do I want them to overlap a little bit? All right, I might keep playing with that. I like the fact that I have two of these that kind of have the same uh, background around them, but I don't necessarily want them right next to each other. So maybe I'll figure out a way to Put it somewhere else on there. Lots of rearranging to do, I guess. All right. So coloring, if you want to add color to anything, we like the gel pens because they show up so well on white, sometimes on even dark paper too. So when you're coloring with a gel pen, I think this one is kind of metallic, so it should show up pretty well. Um, just go right up to the line. If you kind of work in little circles, a gel pen is a lot like a really tiny paintbrush. So it stays wet longer than a regular pen. So you probably should, I should have started in the middle. I don't think I want all of these colored in, but I'm going to do a few. So you need to be really careful as you're working with a gel pen not to set your hand down and smear it across something that's wet. Uh, you'll probably not be real happy with the results. So gel pen ink does not dry. Unless you want to use it as a smearing effect. Yes. <laughs> Lisa has taught, that's something that I had no idea until Lisa kind of mentioned that during another art class. Um, we actually smeared gel pens and I was like, oh my gosh, I had no idea that you could actually use it as a technique on purpose. <laughs> yes, so since you brought that up, I might as well show that right away. Uh, so the best way to smear your gel pens is to actually put down a colored pencil base because a colored pencil base kind of seals the, the paper so the gel pen doesn't uh, soak in even more. And it might be a little bit more effective if I did the, uh, like the, the a dark gel pen. So when you're coloring with a colored pencil and you kind of feel how the paper gets completely filled up with pigment and it gets a little bit waxy and smooth, that's great if you want to do a smear technique or kind of a blending technique with a gel pen because it keeps the ink from soaking into the paper. So let's see, my favorite thing to blend with is actually a little tool that I think was in a kid's children's um, modeling clay set. You can also use a plastic spoon. Those work really well. So it's best to work in small sections at a time. I'm going to take this silver and we'll see if this silver pen has enough ink in it. And I found too that if you can use your finger as well if you're not mm -hmm. afraid of getting your finger <laughs> dirty <Right>. as well. <laughs> uh, so this pen isn't showing up as well as I want. Let's see if I can find another one. Let's try something darker. And it helps if your pen is really a really wet and juicy pen. Some gel pens just don't, aren't really wet, but let's see if I can smear that quick enough. There we go. So it blends out and gives you kind of a nice halfway in between the colors. I don't know if you can see it in the light. But you can see how much, I didn't put a whole lot of the gel ink on there, but you can see how much of it actually spread. So lots of things you can do with that idea. Um, gel pens are a lot of fun. You can actually also blend two colors of gel pens. Let me see if we can try that. So sure my hand's not going to be on a um, 
wet spot here. I could color one section with the purple, get that good and wet, and then come in overlapping it with the red. And you can kind of mix those wet colors. And you can actually blend the two colors so it, it is kind of a nice gradient from one to the other. So just a couple of quick gel pen techniques there. Um, you, you can't really see the exact line between the purple and the uh, metallic pink. The one thing you probably could see is that the purple wasn't as much of a, of a metallic as the red or this kind of a reddish pink. So anyway, yeah, a couple of fun things to do with your gel pens. A base of colored pencil seals the paper off a little bit, keeps things wet a little bit longer. Um, and you could do that underneath something that you wanted to blend this way. The other thing you can do is after you have the color on the paper, you can kind of blend them with a colored pencil. You can do that even when it's wet. So makes it kind of smears the line in between the two and um, makes it hard to see where the line was. So you have a little shadow effect. So awesome. Um, I love playing with the gel pens and the colored pencils. And you can take any of these designs and use them as ideas for your own designs and um, take some of those techniques. You could color the whole thing with colored pencil. You could color things with markers or crayons or anything you had on hand. Probably the only thing I wouldn't recommend that I we use a lot at MCA is oil pastels just because they um, tend to smear and smudge all over things. So probably wouldn't be best on a card surface. So anyway, a couple ideas for what to do with the template. Um, the other template that you have in that kit and that you will be able to get the, um, the PDF for on the site here is, and I can't find mine. Um, would you like me to share? Yeah, go ahead and share that um, the PDF of the antique. Oh, there it is. Sorry, my pile is too big. Um, so Jamie's picture here, if you can scroll down to the bottom of that screen, and there's some really cute old, yeah, that one, um, the Valentine with a heart in it. So if you actually look at this design, you can see some of the things we've already talked about where they're like, different heart shapes are layered over the top of each other. They have used a whole bunch of red hearts kind of as a, a, a vine almost around the outside. And of course you can always add flowers like roses and stuff. But if you look really close at the white in the background that most people don't even really notice, it's kind of, it's basically just a doodle design. So um, if you can see, can you see my, uh, desktop as well. There we go. Okay, so this design that I did with gel pens and uh, colored pencils is actually the same design that was around the corner of that, that old Valentine. So I just used different colors instead of the white on a dark color. I used purple and pink on white. And I filled in a few shadows and stuff with the colored pencils afterwards. So there's lots of things you could look at those vintage Valentines and get ideas and just take it into this century with different colors or however you want to be creative with what you have on hand. Um, so the other thing I was going to, the, one of the things in that video or in that file is we have another video you can watch. And it's just a few ideas on how to do some lines and stuff where you could decorate the envelope that you put this in and send to somebody as well. If you're sending it in the mail, you can certainly um, put the address and stamp on one side and you can decorate all over the other side. So that supplemental video has this pattern and this pattern which were both just basically done with um, colored pencils. Oh, this one might have just been gel pens. So, and it, this was a really like a pink 
metallic gel pen. So it's very subtle. Uh, so I felt like I had to put some black in there to make it stand out a little bit. So just a couple ideas. And I, I picked ones that had definite heart shapes in them. You don't even notice the heart shape first, but um, it is there. So, all right, let's keep going. One of the things that I have on the bottom of the template is just words written, happy Valentine's Day, sweetheart, be mine, all those little phrases that we often see on Valentine cards. When you're doing a personalized one, I like to leave room to write the person's name, maybe write your name, um, and you can use whatever lettering you'd like. I just thought if especially since we have some children in this class. If you need to know how to spell something, I thought I'd write it on there so you can always look that up. So use those ideas to make your own designs. Now I do wanna to get to um, a few of the tricks with these paper hearts. So if you, if you get a design laid out like this that you really like, you know, I think I'm gonna put that one in the middle instead of this one. Then I'll have to find a different place for this. Oh, maybe I could do this. We'll see. I might put that in somewhere else. Okay. Um, so back to the, the hearts. I like to do this idea first where I know where I'm going to put everything. If you need to, you can always lift something up and write a little bit underneath the corners. So you know where, remember where you wanted to put it down. I usually leave, that was probably a little close. I usually like to leave a little bit of space between what I'm adding on and the edge of the paper. You can certainly, if you overlap a paper too much like this, it's not gonna fit in your envelope really well. So this is one of the cases that I'd probably stick to coloring inside the lines. Okay, same thing, I could, I could mark where I want the heart. I'm not too worried about it because it's kind of big and I'll, I think I'll be able to figure out where to put it. So I'm going to go like from the bottom of this pile first. And actually, I think I have quite a few white pages here. So I'm going to peel them apart. Might be a couple in there, but I don't want to glue one down and then find that the next one's not actually glued to it. So, okay. With the glue stick, the best way to do this is to go very carefully. You, you obviously want to get glue on there, but you don't want to rip it. So I like to go kind of around the edges and from the inside out. Now, as you're going over all these little holes in the um, paper, you're going to leave glue on your table top or whatever you've got there. So that's when you want to make sure you have it protected. And it actually, I think it's because of those little holes in the paper, it actually uses quite a bit of glue. You can also go in the center if you want. I, even if I run off the screen here, I don't think I want to move it yet. I'm just going to be a little careful not to get it on my desktop. And you can certainly put some in the middle if you want. Then be really careful when you peel it up because it's going to have glue coming out the front side, which is fine because that dries clean. Now make sure that if this has wet glue on it, you don't put your clean Valentine on that. So I'll bring that in, make sure I don't have anything messy on the desktop. And let's see, did I decide to turn this a little bit? Well, it's turned now. Okay, so even the glue stick does wrinkle this paper a little bit. So just gently tap it down. And I'm using a glue stick that is purple when it's wet and it dries clear. So don't worry about the, the color. It just does help me see where I have excess amounts of glue. 
and I just kind of gently smooth it out again from the inside to the outside of the heart and that helps keep it um, from getting a fold in it or wrinkles or something like that but it's pretty pretty uh pretty thin paper so just be a little careful and Lisa, I think you've kind of mentioned this a little bit, but I just wanted to remind everybody, as with all of our um, art classes that we do online, um, it's okay that yours looks different, and really it should look a little bit different, right? That's the exciting part, is that Lisa's giving you some good ideas. You're welcome to follow if you like exactly what she's doing. You're, you're more than welcome to do that, but um, don't be afraid to take kind of one of her ideas and kind of run with it in a little bit of a different way. As that's, well. that's why I'm showing you different ones that I've done, hoping that that will give you more ideas of different things that I haven't even come up with yet. And the fun thing is, is when we can share those ideas with each other. Um, so if you are working on something that you'd like to show us your work in progress, when you're, we're done with the class, that would be wonderful. I'm just going to do the same thing. I think I am going to layer mine kind of uh, symmetrical or lines parallel, I guess you'd say. And so I'm going to do the same thing with my white. I wasn't too worried about the wrinkle in the middle of the red because I'm covering it up anyway, but um, I don't think I'm gonna put any glue in the center of this one. And you certainly don't have to use heart-shaped um, lace doilies there's all kinds of other fun things you can get and you can make i'm just going to try to line mine up a little bit and then tap it down gently so make sure it's where i want it once this goes down because how fragile a lace doily is you're not going to probably want to try to rip it up or peel it up so be very careful where you're putting it down. And then if it goes somewhere that wasn't exactly planned, just go with it and redesign the rest of your idea a little bit, uh, adapt with that. So uh, the trick, the tip of the day is not worrying about being perfect, just be a little creative. Okay, so my choice here was, do I want the red heart with the white candy heart in the middle just to kind of keep uh, my red and white design or do i want to go with something that has that black in the middle because that's really going to pop so i i think i'm liking this the the red and the white paper hearts and stuff are really kind of just like three different frames for what i put in the center here so if you want to draw your own heart shape or draw something on white, um, doing kind of a frame around it is really going to bring the attention. Everybody else's eye who looks at it is going to go right to that. So we're just using a bunch of things to kind of um, make frames around and make things interesting. So I am doing, I'm, I'm careful right now. I'm not, even though I'm not on my placemat, I thought I stayed pretty clean. So now my heart is not the same shape as the one on the paper doily. So I'm not going to worry about trying to line it up perfect. And now I still need to decide if I want to try this. This red is not, I'm not really excited about it. And the, the white uh, foam sticker underneath is kind of almost too small for that. So what I might do, I like the red, but I don't like it a lot. So what I might do is stick my white foam on the red backing paper. If I can get, they're self-adhesive, so you just gotta be able to peel off that foam layer on the back. And just stick that on somewhere. This will give a really nice uh, three-dimensional feel. So let's see if I can do a border around that. That's not terribly perfect, but a little bit uniform. Sometimes if 
if being perfect is too much of a challenge, it's better just to make it look obvious that you didn't try to make it perfect and just be creative with it. But the best thing is, is that anybody who receives a Valentine from you that's handmade are going to realize that you put a lot of time and thought and energy into it just for them. So it's very personal. I like to spend time thinking about the person that I'm going to give something to while I'm making it. Um, so if you have somebody special in mind, just think good thoughts about them while you're putting it together. Oh, you know what? I think I'm going to do this down in the bottom and have it kind of be like a little echo of that one. Okay, put my cover back on my gel pen or on my glue for now. And I could do the same thing with my banner. Oh goodness, I need a bigger desk. Does anybody have too much stuff on their desk right now? Okay, so one of the things I wanted to do was leave room for me to actually write things on the paper. I don't want to just have I mean, doing a collage idea is great and you could include other things that you have, you know, access to or around you, whatever. But I also want to put some of my own personality into it. So I think I want to leave some, some background space or something where I can write a name. That one, put it over there is a little bit lopsided, but that leave, would leave me some room to put their name up here. So... That's why I don't glue it down at first. I actually like the way it kind of frames the heart over there. And it, it, it brings my eye to this one, which kind of looks like a little echo of it. And if you do something one time that wasn't quite what you wanted, but in the middle of it, you saw something else you liked, then that just gives you a chance to make another one. The uh, supplies for this this type of a project are so inexpensive. Just a little bit of glue everywhere. And so flexible, right? Like there's a, so you know, there's so many things that you could use, even recycled materials and things like sure. that as well. Uh, so a lot of our classes, if you've taken classes from us, you realize we like to. Um, kind of do a found object type thing. If there's extra things you can find in your environment, whether it's out of your recycling bin or whatever, um, we love adding those things to artwork. So my tails here, my little banner, we're sticking up. So I'm just going to glue those back down a little bit. All right kind of coming along quick. I got a basic outline there. Now, one thing I do want to tell you is all of this glue that came through the paper is when it dries, you're not going to be able to write on that with a gel pen. So if you wanted to add some designs to one of these paper doilies or something, I would do it before you glued things down. Um, if you look really closely at the white paper doilies, in each of these spots where it's a solid piece of paper, there's actually a little rose um, kind of embossed into it. So one of the one of the cards I did, I actually took my gel pen before I put it down and I traced over the embossed design in the white paper doily. And that's what those shapes are. I also just kind of followed the embossing around the outside edges there. I added some dots in between on the white background. I think I just took a black pen and I did some basic white or some black dots around the outside. You could have also done extra lines around the outside of this on the, on the white paper. You could have added some designs to that as well. A uh, couple other things I wanted to show you if you have the kit with the stamps, 
This one was a heart shaped stamp and I used it in a circle like I kept turning it around so that the pointy end was in the middle and I made little flowers out of the heart shapes. That was kind of fun. On this one, it's a little bit harder to see. I did the same thing. That's flowers or the hearts in a flower shape. And then around the outside of that, I used my gel pen to just trace the lines, add some like leaves and a stem. So use, use little things like Why? this. This doesn't have to be just a heart. Why is there a ribbon in my bag? Uh, Jamie, do you know the answer to yeah, that? Yeah, the History Center had some extra ribbons from past projects that they, um, they did set a, a ribbon in there. And okay. I, um, which I think could, um, would also work pretty well um, like on the, I'll share the picture again of the old fashioned Valentine, because you yes. can see the, the, um, how they used a ribbon on there, which I think you could just punch holes and, and do that. Yep. If you really carefully put a hole in, you could tie the ribbon into a bow first and you could put holes through the paper to put the ends through, or you could just glue it on top of the page too. So if you had other things like yarn or ribbon at home. I has a whole roll of yarn. Mm -hmm. So you could get creative and add stuff to it. Um, and that would make it more three-dimensional. So I think if you do some three-dimensional things, as long as you do an eight and a half by 11 uh, sheet of paper, the envelopes that came in the kit are nine by 12. So you have a little bit of room inside of the envelopes to get some three-dimensional things. Uh, one of the other things I had left over from another art project was a little plastic gemstone. Those have an adhesive strip on the back. So I stuck that on there. And I have some of the pink foam ones here. As you can see on this one, because remember this was the red lace doily, I cut out a pink heart and I, you can see it through the white stuff here. The pink is in the background. And then I just did a little border around the part that was sticking out. And that was just a, I think that was with a dark gel pen. And I think I used a little bit of a white colored pencil to go right down the middle to make a little bit. So it kind of looks like a highlight. Um, so those little gemstones, I think they come in packages of 25 or 50 at most stores like Walmart or Target that have a little bit of a craft section. Um, oh, you can also see on this one, I wrote the words be mine, which is, you know, spelled out in block letters down at the bottom of your template. And I did it in the gel pen and then in the silver gel pen. And I didn't really like the way it looked. So I was just going to leave it that way. So then I did a line around the outside of the whole thing. And I actually took a dark gel pen and I traced or kind of went right next to some of those silver lines. So it's almost like a little bit of a shadow with a dark gel pen. And then I added some twiny leafy things, vines going around the outside and just almost like some flower petals in some of the corners. And then all of a sudden I really liked it. So I didn't like the lettering that I did. So I kind of disguised that in a little bit, in a little bit of a, a little, just to kind of take your attention away from the words be mine, but they're still there. Um, so. And everybody if, should have in their kits, they should have kind of two contrasting colors, right? There should be kind of a Valentine's day color, such as a red, a pink and, or, or purple and then kind of a comp another color like a blue or a black or something to kind of contrast with that. Right, so you should have, you, you could do two different colors. And then it's also nice to kind of match those up with two similar colors with colored pencils to add a little bit of um, touch to it. And some of the colors like the red or the pink might not have shown up really well on this purple background. So if I wanted to do something like this, I might have done it first on white paper with the gel pens and then cut that out and 
uh, glued it to this whole thing. So lots of pretty simple ways to get creative and use stuff that you have sitting around or can get really inexpensively at a local store. And it's just uh, some ideas that I had when I was playing with things this week. And um, hopefully you guys can get some ideas for yourself as you move those things around and, and play with them. So on your template, I have this heart. Let's see, I thought I put that on one of the designs. I don't remember which one I had that on. Oh, there it is. So I colored it with the two colors of gel pens. You could certainly do like a black and a pink or something. If you, since you can get this uh, as a PDF, if you would like to print this in your own printer at home, you could try different colors of paper in there. If you have some pink paper or some red paper, you could send that through. I think what I'm using for red paper is, is basically just computer paper too. It's, it's not a heavy paper or anything. Um, and feel free to copy those off as many times as you'd like. Uh, cut them up or color on them or use them as an example to cut other things out of. So how are we doing? Is everybody uh, getting some ideas? And Good. so some of you might have been actually working along and playing with the, your supplies if you had the kit. Does anybody have anything they would like to hold up and show the rest of the group? Um, we'll take Good me course. off. Oh, go ahead, Jamie. Yeah, I was going to say, I think we'll stop recording. So before I do that, I just wanted to give a call out to the Winona Fine Arts um, Commission, which gave us a grant that made um, a lot of this possible, as well as our partners at the Winona um, County Historical Society. And um, 